From your local source, WCJB TV 20, this is TV 20 News Weekend Report. Good evening. We're continuing our coverage of a developing story tonight. I'm Stephanie Bichara. Traffic on I-75 was delayed for miles as lanes were blocked by law enforcement. They were working to catch a man who shot at a state trooper. TV20's Alexandro Rivera tells us how a massive manhunt slowed things down for motorists in North Central Florida and where the investigation now stands. Multiple law enforcement agencies were involved in the search for a man who was described by Alachua County Sheriff's deputies as mentally unstable. That man was firing shots throughout the day before he was finally taken down. Traffic was bumper to bumper in both directions after a manhunt shut down the area near I-75 closest to Paynes Prairie and Micanopy all the way up to the Wilson Road exit in Gainesville. Florida Highway Patrol officials say they received a call from a state trooper at around 8.30 this morning that was inspecting a disabled vehicle near exit 376 on I-75. The trooper said he found a man lying near the forest line and approached him to see if he was all right. That's when he noticed he had a gun. At that point in time, the trooper was seeking cover and attempting to get the person to drop their weapon. The person stood up and entered the wood line. The trooper then was going back to his unit and of course was calling this in and he heard three distinct gunshot noises. FHP called out to multiple law enforcement agencies. Officials say that it was a joint effort to conduct the search, noting it was a serious situation because of the suspect's unknown mental state. We don't know what his state of mind is. He has fired random shots over a period of time. So it's not a rapid fire situation where there's an intended target that we of which we know. But we are very concerned about this. The search shut down I-75 for hours, both northbound and southbound. We thought it was like a wreck or something like that. We didn't think that something this serious was going on. Ultimately, a joint effort between Alachua and Marion County Sheriff's offices took the suspect down. According to ASO, a rook or an armed critical incident vehicle was used to pin the suspect down once he was found. Officials say gunfire was exchanged between him and law enforcement officers. The suspect threatened officers and then shot at them first before gunfire was exchanged. That suspect is now dead, and although officials haven't specified how it happened, they felt they did their job to protect the public. Put yourself in, in, in the situation of this trooper doing his job this morning, stopping to assist a disabled vehicle. He approaches that vehicle and then is confronted with somebody uh, with a gun. Uh, and he's just doing his job trying to make sure that that citizen is getting the service that they need and being safe. But that trooper was threatened and our folks have been threatened and we're going to do what was necessary to keep our people safe and the public safe. As of now, this is an open, ongoing investigation being conducted by Alachua County Sheriff's Office. The only identification we have on the suspect is that he was a black male. Florida Highway Patrol is also not releasing the name of that trooper involved until the investigation is complete. The interstate is now open for both north and southbound lanes. Traffic is no longer being diverted. And as the investigation continues, you can look out for updates on our Facebook page and on our website, WCJB.com. Alexandra Rivera, TV20 News. Thanks for that report, Alex. Let's get a first look at our weather with meteorologist Mike Gismondi. We've seen some rain here and there this afternoon. Will things clear up for tonight, though? Yeah, I think they will, Stephanie. You know, we started out pretty nicely. We warmed up quickly, most spots to around 90 degrees, and that rain was really moving in today from northeast to the southwest, and it pushed through our area uh, through the afternoon hours. But before then, temperatures did warm up to right around where they should be at this time of the year. We start out nicely through the morning, early afternoon, and all of a sudden, you kind of see that line of showers really get going as it moves from that northeast portion up near Jacksonville, and then is now continuing to push through our viewing area. Here's what it looks like on the storm vision radar and you'll notice that there's a little bit more lightning now associated with this than it was earlier on becoming a little bit more organized actually as it starts to roll offshore and even out of Dixie and Levy counties finally just some light to moderate rain left over right now for our interior portions. I won't rule out a few more showers through the rest of the overnight but hopefully nothing heavier than what we've already seen so far today. Temperature wise obviously a little bit cooler main reason being we've seen those uh, showers push through and that's really helped us out in the temperature department. Here's what it looks like through the overnight. Temperatures dipping down to around 73 degrees through the overnight. Should start out pretty nice for your Sunday, but where's the afternoon hold? I have that forecast for you coming up in just a couple of minutes. 
Three years ago, on a day like today, a North Central Florida man by the name of Omar Gibson was reported missing. Since that day, his family has had many questions. Among all of them, the most important one remains unanswered. Where did Gibson go? TV20's Danielle Prince shares with us what the day is like for his family. A case remains unsolved three years after Omar Gibson went missing. His family says the biggest lead police officers have come across was the recovery of Gibson's car at the Palms apartment complex on 39th Avenue in Gainesville. They said that they found his car. I thought maybe something else would come along with him being present, but then that's when it really got shaky for me. That was three years ago. Since 2012, Gibson's family says there have been no other leads. They hope time will change this. I just really hope somebody who knows something that they would um, at least speak out so my family could have closure because this is not easy. Each day, Gibson's mother says she has questions running through her mind. What went down? What took place? Um, where was he? Who was with him? His mother has not been the only one missing him. His children do as well. Although Gibson's mom says they're too young to understand, the entire family deals with the pain of the unknown. Just the unknown, not knowing, that's what kind of break me down. But at the same time, I, I still have hope. Gibson's family says there is still a $1,000 reward for anyone with information leading to an arrest. If you have any information about Gibson's disappearance, please call the Gainesville Police Department. Danielle Prince, TV20 News. Authorities say the caregiver of a missing Jacksonville boy has been lying to investigators about the child's disappearance. Officials with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office say 32-year-old William Ebron has been arrested and charged with two counts of child neglect. Investigators believe Ebron was lying about the disappearance of his girlfriend's son, Lonzi Barton. Ebron initially told investigators that Lonzi had been in a car stolen yesterday, but authorities no longer believe the car theft and abduction happened as he described it. Detectives say they are still treating the case as a child child abduction and don't know whether Lonzi is dead or alive. The investigation into the deadly shooting at a Louisiana movie theater continues. We'll tell you what officials are saying about the gun used in the attack. Plus, President Obama held the first formal press conference on his trip to Africa. After the break, we'll tell you what topics he discussed with the president of Kenya. That's up next on your TV20 News Weekend Edition. Stay tuned.